You know a notable quote as soon as you hear it. And how do you know it's right? When you see it printed in a news story, quoted in a news clip, or going viral on social media. Or even better, a quote that lives on for the ages. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Isn't that quote more timely than ever? Today on the podcast, how to create a memorable quote. Bottom line up front, we are weeks into a global pandemic, and there are many heads of organizations and CEOs out there who are aiming to make their mark. You don't have to scroll too far on social media to determine which communication tactics produce a leader who will stand out. It's the quotable quote, the perfectly placed, tailored for Twitter, a wallop of words that sticks when it lands. Now, it's the politicians and world leaders who have a better track record with memorable quotes over CEOs and other people in the business world. Because campaigns and politicians, they have their speechwriters and their communicators who are tasked with creating indelible language. The business world, those folks, that job tends to fall into the corporate hands of communicators who get into corporate speak. And it's just a lot easier to fall into it. So in this episode today, we are going to talk about how to create a memorable quote, examples of these memorable quotes, and why they work. But before I dive in, a quick media term tutorial. A quote is short for a quotation, and that is from a text or speech. A soundbite is a short extract from a recorded audio interview or video interview. A message, as in a PR message, a key message, a talking point. Now, these are statements that support your argument or your side. A quote can be a soundbite, and a soundbite can be originated from a talking point. They can all work together. But in this day and age, especially in the age of social media, online media, digital media, quotes go across all platforms, all mediums. In other words, it's the statement that sticks. Now, how do we make it work? Let's get to the quick of a good quote. Now, overall quotes, they should convey humanity, passion, and a point of view. And this goes for any quote, whether it's during the time of the COVID-19 or any other time. You always want to speak to the people, the person, the passion behind it, your mission, your value statement, and then your point of view. Quotes must be clear. They have to be understandable the first time around, and they should be shorter, especially nowadays. Why? Because audiences now have a much shorter attention span. The same applies to your interviews. Just saying, if you're doing a television interview, radio, podcast, the shorter, the better when it comes to your answers. Don't get lulled into a conversation. It's very difficult to pull out a quote if you are in the middle of a conversation. Podcasts, this happens a lot. When you go into any type of interview, you want to make sure that you're going in armed with a good quote. So when it comes time to sit down, craft that ideal quote, you want to look for things that are memorable. These are the memorable phrases they contain, maybe just a generic thought, but it's expressed in a way that has an unusual combination of words or sounds, just from ordinary sentences and stories. It's all about the semantics, but how you use the words to make it land. So for this episode, I used a guide. I went to the PR News Writer's Guidebook, written by Pauline Howes. She's an associate professor at Kennesaw State University School of Communication and Media. And she provided tips that I saw across the board, some that I use myself, but I thought she pretty much covered everything that needs to be said about how to create a perfect quote. Number one, write like people talk. And not just highfalutin people, real people. Be conversational, avoid trite filler language. If you can think of one speaker nowadays in the COVID-19 crisis landscape, who better than Governor Cuomo? 
Andrew Cuomo from New York, he nails this one in spades. He's tough talking. He's straight to the point. He looks in the camera and he's going to tell you exactly what he means. And he does it with memorable quotes. Now, as an aside, one of the reasons why Governor Cuomo, I think, is so successful in his press conferences is because he understands that he is creating a moment in time for the time that we're in. He's delivering news and he delivers it almost daily. And his press conference is set for a place in time where we need social distancing, where we need answers, where we need straight answers. Governor Cuomo doesn't want to waste any time with fake news or misinformation. He wants to get to the point directly. He is very, very protective about his state of New York. And that is very clear. I think Governor Cuomo and his press office, they they are rewriting the book, the playbook for how to nail a press conference. Now, if you were to watch Governor Cuomo's press conferences, you will notice that they are much different than any other press conference that you see. As I mentioned, he is rewriting how to do and how to conduct a very, very effective press conference. He deploys this new tactic. It's a split screen graphic. Now, we've certainly seen it before, but not in precisely this way. You'll see Governor Cuomo to the left of the screen. The camera rarely moves off of him, so he can constantly be directed looking at the people, looking at the camera and speaking to them because he knows, his staffers know, that part of his nonverbal, his tone, his voice, his look, is all about the power and the power of his communication. To the right on the split screen, it's almost like watching a PowerPoint. You'll see a slide deck with bullet points that are laying out precisely what he's talking about. It's incredibly effective. And you don't need to live in New York and be a part of the New York media market to see these press conferences. They're on air. So that is the reason why President Cuomo is trending on Twitter. So what does it sound like when you get a real person talking? sounds like this. So I say, my friends, that we go out there today and we kick coronavirus ass. That's what I say. And we're going to save lives. And New York is going to thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Next, to create a memorable quote, you want to use phrasing that is memorable and helps create a picture in a person's mind to it? 1988, you had the vice presidential debate, the candidate for the Democrats, Senator Lloyd Benson, to the Republican, Senator Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle brought up the name of a previous popular president, John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States. And on a depressing side note, if you have Gen Z kids or junior staffers in your office, a millennial, uh, go ahead and ask them if they've ever heard of Lloyd Benson or Dan Quayle for that matter. Go ahead, go ask them. That will not make your day. So a memorable quote for people who are old enough to remember it came from this exchange. I have as much experience in the Congress as Jack Kennedy did when he sought the presidency. I will be prepared to deal with the people in the Bush administration if that unfortunate event would ever occur. Senator Benson. Senator, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. It was the phrasing that made that quote so memorable. Next, providing meaningful insights and perspectives in a quote that increase the value of the quote and the likelihood it will be picked up by the press. It is okay to have an opinion, but you don't want to hype anything because that's counterproductive. Let's go to our coronavirus quote machine, Dr. Anthony Fauci. He's the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. And he, in this quote, is telling the House Oversight Committee that the number of coronavirus cases will continue to grow. So I can say we will see more cases and things will get worse than they are right now. How much worse we'll get will depend on our ability to do two things, to contain the influx uh, in people who are infected coming from the outside and the ability to contain and mitigate within our own country. 
bottom line, it's going to get worse. Now, staying with the good doctor, it's also important to avoid jargon, any technical or scientific terms that might need further explanation or definition. You want the listener and the reader to understand precisely what you're saying as soon as you say it. Here's an example. If it's California, and there you have the governor and the mayor discussing the Los Angeles mayor, that it's going to be months. It's going to take months for them. And then you're hearing uh, here in New York, Andrew says, uh, the governor here says, we're two or three weeks from seeing the worst crush at the hospitals. I mean, it seems that the timeline is getting extended farther out, not that things are going better than expected anywhere. What you've got to do, Chris, you've got to be realistic and you've got to understand that you don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. Mm. So you've got to respond in what you see happen. So here we have Dr. Fauci taking to mass media to explain a complex virus while intercepting misinformation that is spreading as fast as the virus itself. Fauci also strikes a balance with quotation length. If you watch him in a long interview, and he does many sit-down interviews that are long, he says enough to convey a complete thought, but he doesn't go on too much. Now, when it comes to your quotes, think along the lines of Goldilocks. You don't want to go too long, but you don't want to go too short, but you want to have it be just right for the purpose. In other words, for the purpose of getting your point across. Like I always say to my clients, get in and then get out. Next, include information that adds detail and depth to the story, but not just the basic facts that can be covered in the body of a press release or a story or further on in a speech. Now, I noticed this detail when my 18-year-old daughter forced me to watch Pearl Harbor with Ben Affleck. And I don't even know how many times I've had to watch this movie. It's over three hours long. It was one of those guilty quarantine nights where I was. we started the movie at 10 o'clock at night. Now, as I was watching the movie again, I was reading a lot of trivia about the movie, and John Voight uh, played the role of FDR, and it turns out that he considers himself an expert in Franklin D. Roosevelt, so much so that he felt compelled to improve on this memorable speech in the movie Pearl Harbor. But I'll save your ears for that bad impression, and I will give you the real deal. Here is just enough detail to make this very striking statement even more so. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the empire of Japan. It was the date and the details that helped create that statement, a statement for infamy. Next, use a straightforward style when attributing a quote. Now listen, the verbs said and says provide a direct way to attribute a quote. But if you use attribution phrases such as according to or stated or commented, any type of that stilted writing it's going to sound stilted if you speak that way. You want to be able to write a quote how you speak. Here's an example where he said it the right way. And while I'm very proud of what we've achieved together, I'm far more mindful of my own failings, knowing exactly what Lincoln meant when he said, I have been driven to my knees many times by the overwhelming conviction that I had no place else to go. Next, consider the appropriate tense for the subject and the type of news story. So when you're referring to a completed action or referring to something that has already happened, use the past tense. For a more timeless tone, the present tense works as well. And that's where stories come in. Stories are a great way to get noticed, to get your story noticed, to tell a story, to get to a point. But you're also using the appropriate tense for the subject matter. Here's a quote and a story from the director of the Ohio Department of Health, Dr. Amy Acton. Now she's another rising star and is in that orbit with other big names in the spotlight around COVID-19. Here, take a listen 
from a quote by Dr. Acton. That's a story. Ruby said she's nine years old. She's at home with her little brother. I had a little brother growing up. She said, I'm happy you see a bright future for us. And I want to tell you, Ruby, I see, not only do I see a bright future for us, I see a bright right now for us. Embedded in a story about nine-year-old Ruby is a great quote. Because not only did she see a bright future for us, she sees a bright future right now for us. She is yet another quote maker with a fan club of people calling for her to run for president. Next, with quotes, especially in the age of the call-out culture where people want to bring you down, make sure your facts are real and right. No fake news. Check the stats, the facts, and proof free to avoid any grammar or punctuation errors if it is a statement that is going to go out or go online. You don't want any typos. And finally, be sure to provide accurate names and spellings of anything that you're going to cite. Get your numbers right. However, here's a case where the math wasn't right, but this leader nowadays does no wrong. FEMA is sending us 400 ventilators. This are on the news this morning. We are sending 400 ventilators to New York. 400 ventilators? I need 30,000 ventilators. You want a pat on the back for sending 400 ventilators? What are we gonna do for 400, with 400 ventilators when we need 30,000 ventilators. You're missing the magnitude of the problem, and the problem is defined by the magnitude. I had to add that quote in there as well, because here's a fact that he got completely wrong, but I'm sure you've heard this quote from him because it was still a powerful quote. Even though the people who reported on it noted that he got the facts wrong, the math wrong, the point was right. Now, the last thing that you must remember, especially in the age of social media, your quotable quotes must get boiled down to a tweetable truth. 280 characters is all you're going to get. So when you are creating that quote to last a lifetime, be sure that you create a quote that will make it in this time, the time of social media. 280 characters isn't a lot of real estate. And that's not just the letters, that's the space and the letters. So if you're creating any type of memorable quotes or banding quotes together, make sure you have one killer quote that will fit within the 280 characters. Now, if you are a leader who is managing your communications with your head just above water, keep listening to the podcast because I'm going to be producing a number of COVID-19 related episodes to help people communicate with better PR and communication tactics that will work in this time of the unknown. And if you want access to more content, I urge you to check out the COVID-19 Communicator Response Kit. On responsekit.org, you will find downloads of valuable content to help you reach your key stakeholders. The kit contains video interviews with other communicators working within the field, people who have experienced past crises that apply to this one. There are also templates for use as first drafts in your communications. You can use it as is, or you can take it, copy, paste it, and use it as your first draft. We have press releases, statements, status reports for your websites. Also just added wireframe templates for your website. So what you need to provide for your customers or members on your website to keep them up to date on your organization's response to the COVID-19 virus. And the most valuable part of the response kit is the Slack community. Slack.com is a social channel, but it's one where people are mostly conversing with each other. Consider it like a texting feature, but texting with people that you may not know, but you know them online and it's in a community. Consider it like a big group chat. You have emojis, you can add videos, but you can add hyperlinks. You can add a lot of content and information. Every day in this Slack channel, people are interacting, collaborating, and discussing information about their roles as it relates to COVID-19. Right before I recorded this episode, I was following members discussing post-crisis options for their clients. And I was watching intently because I am kicking off my COVID-19 response 
online training this week, and that is exactly what I was working on. Someone else was looking for contributions to a blog, and another person was providing information to me about an upcoming uh, podcast. So I am in that Slack community every day. So if you listen to this podcast and you want to work with me and you want to find a way that you can tap into my knowledge based on my experience or people who I'm working with right now, then hop on into the Slack community. I'm speaking with people every day. I'm welcoming them into the community. And I am beyond pleased when I see members starting to help each other because this community is not about me. I just wanted to start it to give a place for people like me to support each other. So head on over to responsekit.org, or you can also find it on my website off of mollymcpherson.com. And by the way, I forgot to mention, but here it is. It's free. So nothing is going to prevent you from signing on. I hope today's episode helped you write a memorable quote or at least start thinking about how you could. The leaders are the ones who are able to get their messages out to the public and that their messages are heard. And one of the best ways to do that is with a memorable quote. If there's anything that you can remember about all the information that I shared with you today is this. Your quotes should come from the heart. You must convey humanity, your passion, and a point of view. And hopefully your point of view is to help your key stakeholders, your internal stakeholders, your external stakeholders, your customers, your consumers, your members. Remember, they want to see you and they want to know your value system. So make sure you package it in a memorable quote. That's all for now. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to speaking with you next week. 